this is a bit of a meta project because every time I release one of these videos, I turn into a social media goblin for like a week afterwards. I am obsessively checking how the video is doing, what people are saying, where they're sharing, etc. And I do want to engage. I think I deserve to, right? I work hard on this stuff and often the discussion is kind of the whole point. However, I don't think it is particularly healthy to allow every single interaction with my work to just blast itself into my consciousness in real time. So I thought, what if, instead of push notifications, hear me out, pull notifications. What if there was a physical place in the real world that I had to get off my ass and go to in order to collect my push notifications? Like the analog mailboxes of yore. So that is exactly what I made. This toy mailbox is rigged to tell my home network to block any notifications until I physically put my phone inside it. At the core of this project is a Raspberry Pi computer acting as a Wi-Fi router. So the Pi is wired into the internet and my phone connects to it wirelessly. The cool part about using a Pi for this is that it's relatively easy to monitor and control any web traffic that goes through it. I'm also running a custom DNS server on the Pi, which I can use to redirect any requests my phone makes to Google's notification service. If you're not familiar with DNS, it is the service that all of our internet connected devices use to turn these URLs into these IP addresses, which represent the actual locations of the data we try to retrieve whenever we load a website. We need DNS because A, these are a lot easier for humans to remember and share, and B, these change a lot. So if you did a DNS lookup for google.com twice in a row, one right after the other, you are very likely to get two different IP addresses because Google has many computers all over that are able to field your request. So my DNS server is looking specifically for requests heading out to these domains, which Google lists as the ones you need to have available on your network in order for phones to access push notifications. But I'm doing the exact opposite of that. Any time a device asks my DNS server for the IP address at one of these domains, I'm giving them just a nonsense IP address. Now, the phone still tries to go to that dead end and access push notifications, but nothing's there, and so I don't get any dings. If this setup sounds at all familiar to you, it's probably because it's also how network-wide ad blockers like Pi-hole work. So instead of looking for domain names associated with push notifications, Pi-hole is gonna be filtering out DNS lookups for advertisers and trackers. Now, when my phone goes in the mailbox, I want the push notification requests to actually make it to Google's servers. So inside the mailbox is a little mechanical switch that closes when the phone is inserted. And that switch tells a little Wi-Fi microcontroller to reach out to the Raspberry Pi and say, hey, let's stop all those DNS redirects. Let's send DNS lookups to a real server somewhere. When the Pi receives this signal from the microcontroller, it also briefly boots all devices off of its Wi-Fi network. And this is so that they all have to reconnect and do their DNS lookups over again. This is when the phone is gonna look for the Google servers and actually find them. At this point, all the pending notifications come through and when the phone comes out or after 30 seconds pass, whichever comes first, the microcontroller tells the Pi to turn the DNS redirects back on. The Pi does that and again, boots everything off of the Wi-Fi network, so it has to reconnect. As a side note, I am actually very proud of the switch mechanism I designed to detect that the phone is in place. Hopefully you can tell by now, this is not a real product. I did not want to spend a bunch of time and money getting it up and running. So what I did, I dug out two different sized springs, a shorter, fatter one and a longer, skinnier one. I took the skinny spring and I put it inside the wider one and dangled them into the area where the phone slides in. So the phone is gonna hit the skinny spring and push it against 
the wider one. And no matter which way the spring goes, it's gonna touch the wider one. Then I just wrap a wire around each of the springs. I connect one to an I.O. pin on my microcontroller, another to ground, and now I can tell when the springs are touching from my code. And I can even use this switch to wake the microcontroller up from low power mode so it doesn't drain the battery quickly when the mailbox isn't in use. Okay, I'm getting really cold on this bench, but before I go, I'm just gonna rapid fire the rest of the hardware for this project. The mailbox is an off-the-shelf toy from Melissa and Doug. They make really cute stuff. I am definitely gonna recycle this for my daughter when I'm done with it. I drilled a hole in the mailbox flag so that I could connect it to a cheap hobby servo. I think it's an MG90S. They're all over Amazon. For the microcontroller, I'm using a Feather S3 from Unexpected Maker. That's an ESP32S3, and I'm running CircuitPython. And this is just a 3D printed shelf that I designed to stick to the inside of the mailbox with um, this nanotape stuff. Have, have you guys used this? This is amazing. You gotta get some. I'll leave a link in the description below to a page that will tell you more about how I got it all working. <sighs> Hello, it's me. I am home and I am warm and I was about to film this whole question and answer segment and I said to myself, you know what, this meeting could be an email. So instead I'm just going to leave a list of questions that I anticipate getting along with the answers that I would give in either the video description or a pinned comment or something like that. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will do my best to answer the ones that aren't mean. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to talk about this project more. I don't anticipate anyone building the exact thing that I built, but I do think that there are elements of it that you might find useful. So, please let me know if uh, there's any way I can help you with your work, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks!